you can ask the funny some questions about you know, what things like gnarly really, like did it what did it grip? Unless he's busy right now. Yo. Yo. What's up? <laughs> You'll never guess who won. Who won? Yeah. <laughs> That's a blowout, huh? Oh my god. things like mental. Ooh, it's got a lightness to it. It's funny when you pick the board up and you feel it's light, you're like, ooh, you get excited. But then my light boards never work good. That's got some nose flip. It's a cool looking tail. I think this is the map. This board has really nice, like, California, like, semi-circle kind of hot dog rails. Thin stringer, supposed to be more lively, right? This is chunky. This is somewhat obscure, I think. They all look so similar. We are back with 13 world-class board builders who are provided nothing more than a mystery surfer's height weight, and preferred board length. Then each asked to produce one mean, clean, unmarked surfboard. This is our famously flawed and barely scientific search for the world's most high-performance shortboard. Welcome to the ninth edition of Stab's annual double blind board test. It's got some funky rails. You guys pulling a trick on me or something? I've never been like an extreme guy, like when my boards are like extreme concave or extreme rockers. Maybe because I'm so moody, I needed something to be true. <laughs> this year's stunning research subject is Mr. Kolohe Andino, a gent who, exiting the womb of pro surfer, could possibly have ridden more surfboards than any other 29-year-old that's ever lived. Oh, I see Dane doing this. I don't know what he's looking at. <laughs> I'm more of a just do that and then look there. Whoa. That thing looks crazy up there. So much thickness up here. Wow, that's a crazy looking tail. Eight or 10 years ago, rounded squares, squares were super, everyone was riding them. I haven't had a good square tail in about five years. I don't even know if I can come up with 13 shapers. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that anyone would get all of these correct because they all look the same. And no one has. In 2015, the inaugural Stab in the Dark, Julian Wilson guessed three of his 11 boards correctly. Then Dane Reynolds guessed five of 13. I have no idea. Next, Jordy Smith, in the name of testing purity, refused to partake. In Japan, Mick Fanning guessed five of nine. Ta-da. Taj Burrow was the first and only goose egg Zero from 13 <laughs> guesses. This is just for theta because I don't have a fucking clue. Jackie Robinson, seven of 13. It smells like Oz. I've had a JS, I know that smell. Seriously, yeah. And more recently, in 2023, Italo Ferreja was just one of 13. It's now Kolohe's turn. Well, I think I, this could be a Is that a crazy call? He's never even been in it, I don't think. 
This leaves Kolohe with a dozen designs to test and systematically delete until he's left with just one, our new stab in the dark champion. Kolohe has the next 11 days in Bali, Indonesia and a nearby island to find his favorite. This episode, Kolohe will surf the Paisel, Pukas, Chris Borst, Sharpie, and Mayhem, one of which will make the final. One will be eliminated, two will be put aside for further testing, and another will be disqualified. Should we get this thing started? 